Hey everybody, what is up Dave here? Coming back from the vi coming back to the channel with a new video, not coming back to the video with a new channel. That's no, that's not happening. Anyway, today's video is actually kind of about an Engadget article. I'm kind of I made a rage video earlier about a subject that I had a lot of knowledge about and I forgot how much I enjoy making those style videos where I give myself bullet points to talk about and you know, just kind of enjoy the conversation and then have a conversation with you guys in the comments over the subject. And this is kind of something I have a lot of knowledge about because I used to make game hacks for Halo Combat Evolved, Halo Custom Edition, Halo Online, Combat Arms, uh, the Nitto 1320 games, and uh, Racing Rivals. I've made positive mods, so like additions um, to like Need for Speed series games like custom cars and things like that so this is kind of my area of expertise in a way and i'm going to explain why this isn't going to work uh at all as soon as the update drops for this to be in call of duty so basically what's going on is call of duty is using clones of real players to mess with cheaters only detected or suspected hackers can see and interact with these hallucinations quote unquote so Basically, what do you look for, or what are these things that people are using to basically hack these games? Well, it's usually menus like this. This is just a random YouTube video I found, but because I don't play Call of Duty. I don't know anything about Call of Duty. But this is your basic mod menu or hack menu. In the mobile space, it's called a mod menu for some reason. In PC gaming and console gaming, it's called a hack menu. I don't know why they overlap. Maybe one of these days I'll do a video on the difference between a mod and a hack because there is a big difference and it's actually kind of one of my pet peeves that eats at me every time I hear them being interchangeably used because they're not the same thing. But as you can see, there's aimbot, player ESP, item ESP, radar, exploits, and settings, as well as safe mode and if cheats are enabled or not, which is kind of like a kill key, I'm guessing, for destroying all hacks and disabling all of them at once. In case you're like worried of an admin coming in or something like that. But as you can see, there are some pre defaults on this mod menu for aimbot. There's legit to make you look like a legit player, so it's gonna have like smooth aim, it's gonna have uh, aim acceleration control, so it's controlled and looks realistic. Um, gonna have a whole bunch of things like aim FOB, like certain per uh, degrees of view, basically. So your FOV and all that. Uh, if it's going to auto fire, if it's going to rapid fire, if it's going to have any sort of delay on the auto fire, that's kind of the things you would have set. So as you can see, also let me just explain the other things because we're here for it. Player ESP is going to be things like showing bounding boxes through walls, wall hacks, chams. Chams are a more advanced wall hack where you need to reverse engineer something called the strides, which is like a class in the game for controlling or knowing, okay, this is going to be a player's body, this is a player's head, versus this is a flag hanging on the wall, and it's different parts of what DirectX is actually displaying on your screen. Uh, item ESP is going to be the same thing as like player ESP. You'll also usually get like health bars, name tags, uh, armor stuff, armor information, whole bunch of information with this item esp is going to be like stuff on ground like these lines are going to be uh player esp uh, item esp is going to be imagine if these were pointing at guns that are already littered around the map because a player's dying and you can run over them and pick up their guns uh a whole bunch of things can be under esp if uh item esp if you know minecraft hacks uh chest esp uh player esp all that kind of stuff it's all the same idea uh, radar is going to put an actual radar on your screen so you can see if people are coming towards you or if there's already a radar built into the game. I know with some Call of Duties, I think there used to be in the past, it'll basically show the enemies on the radar as well so you know where they are if you don't want to use wall hacks. Uh, exploits are probably exactly what you think they are. In Call of Duty's sake, as I can see from the video title, it's free unlock all. Uh, so that's, yeah, you can see he's going through it actually right now. Hold on. So let's go back to the, oh yeah, exploit, he was showing it off. But player ESP, uh, max range, 
uh, box type if it, you want it to be a corner box or a 3D box. Uh, 3D boxes in combat arms were very popular. Uh, skeleton is going to be like the actual skeleton of the 3D model. Player names, player health, weapons, ex uh, exact weapon name. If they're on a team, you know, player kills, how many they've had, player deaths, how many they've had, their ping, their distance. And look, this hack is even already updated to detect... Uh, okay, these are probably bots of stuff that's already in the game. Never mind. Uh, bullet prediction. These are really useful. Player aim warning. Let's see item ESP in this. So, like I said, uh, cash, storage containers, armor, gas masks. This is all stuff you could basically see through walls to know exactly where it is. Radar is, yeah, it's going to be a 2D radar that it draws on screen. You can see the little example of the boxes here, uh, all the different things that it does. Exploits, uh, outlines, uh, outline enemies, so probably like a line drawn around them. Um, there's probably things like unlock all weapons. Oh yeah, unlock everything. There's a button. So you click that and it probably unlocks all the ga uh, guns and armor and stuff like that for you. You can also control game FOV. Yeah, here's a great example. Health bars, bounding boxes, skeletons, different color behind wall versus when visible. This is probably item ESP right here, this little blue purple thing. On one monitor it's purple, on the other it's blue. I really need to go through and do some color calibrations. Uh, you can see... Let's see what else there is in this video. Definitely using aimbot. Uh, looks like it's semi-legit aimbot, too. Oh, this guy's just an idiot and doesn't even know he's there. That's stupid. The recoil is like nothing. Wow, that's really stupid. But yeah, you can see, so brighter color behind wall, darker color when visible. Uh, the radar, yeah, the radar is up here. Oh yeah, that's they're not even like trying to be legit with it in this video, which is a good example. But why am I bringing this up? So let's go back to the article. Activision has employed a string of tactics in its cat and mouse battle with Call of Duty cheaters, from making them unable to see targets to simply making their guns go away, uh, taking their guns away. The latest measure is one of the first steps that the developers have taken to combat Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2.0 hackers who use banned tools, for instance, like wall hacks or aimbots and stuff like that, like we've been talking about, uh, to learn extra information and gain an unfair advantage over other players. That's about a good synopsis of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. When Activision systems detect or suspect a cheater, a hallucination may deploy. That's a good thing to call it. That's a cool thing to call it. These won't impact legitimate players at all, and they're designed to disorient hackers. Here's the really clever part. Each hallucination is a clone of a real player in the match, according to the Ricochet anti-cheat system. Hallucinations move, look, and interact with the world just as a human player would to trick the cheaters into thinking they've encountered a genuine opponent. Ricochet says cheaters won't be able to tell the difference between all hallucinations and genuine players at a first glance. The team notes that in an image above, there's one hallucination and one real player, which is this one. So, yeah, two players. Uh, hallucinations emit the same kinds of hidden information that cheaters receive from legitimate players through their illicit tools. Hallucinations will also be deployed Close to the suspect cheater, if a shady looking player interacts with the hallucination at all, then boom, they basically out themselves as a hacker. Now, let's go over this paragraph here. And I'm going to explain why, yes, this is going to work for maybe the first month or less. It's not going to work for long. Not at all. So, in Combat Arms, uh, Nexon's. Uh, development of the game years and years back they kind of had the same thing unintentionally in uh, zombie modes uh, I can think of definitely cabin fever had it definitely black lung had it um, and there was one other map that did zombies that also had it they basically had three zombies under the map and if you killed those zombies the only way to kill those zombies was with a feature called super bullets, uh, be, which would shoot through solid objects. The bullets were basically invincible. They could go through anything. So you would have to shoot through the ground, through the map, down like 
whatever their unit of measurement was in that game down like 200 feet. You could barely even see them with ESP. And you would kill those zombies if you were using an aimbot. It would just auto-detect them and shoot right at them. Immediately, it was a month or two, maybe less, after those zombies were uh, found out in the code that we had hacks ready that were detecting the difference between zombies above the ground and zombies below the ground. Nexon also for a very brief time, I believe it was only for like one or two patches, also tried almost this exact method to detect cheaters using aimbots and super bullets and things like that. If, um, you know, there would be like fake players that were suddenly spawning under the map or uh, above the map. And if your aimbot would aim at them and shoot at them, those players would disappear. Um, and you would get basically your account flagged and you would be potentially banned for being a cheater. Which granted, in combat arms, back then in like 2012, 2013, hacks and cheats were not as sophisticated as they are now. They were definitely good. And there were a lot of players that got away with it for a long time, but they were not like now. Uh, they kind of tried this, and it only worked for a month or two. Because once we just reverse engineered the classes and hooked the correct addresses and then used the correct offsets from the classes, we basically knew exactly how to detect what's a fake versus real player. And then you never aimed at those fake players ever again with your aimbots or your ESP or anything, that would just not happen. Those fake players were basically, yes, they tried to spawn them in. Your hacks would not see them at all. Not at all. So that it only worked for a month or two. This is going to be completely useless in a month or two. <clears throat> On the other hand, Ricochet has wound down one of its hacker mitigations. It was called Quicksand, and oddly enough, it would slow down a Call of Duty cheater or freeze them in place. It could mess with their control scheme as well. And updated version of Quicksand may be added in the future, but it's on the shelf for now. <laughs> okay, so one of my other favorite things in video games, though, is when developers mess with cheaters and pirates. There's videos all over YouTube of different things that developers have done to cheaters and pirates uh, of games where like, the game is not completable if you pirate it in a certain way. Or things like this, where they literally mess with the cheaters, like control system and stuff like that, and you can't walk or shoot or your weapons disappear or something like that. I love this kind of stuff. While quicksand was a fun mitigation, I'm going to sneeze. One of these days I'll get one of my sneezes through my mic because I'll miss the pause button, and you guys will yell at me in the comments for how loud it was and destroying your eardrums through the headphones you might be using. Or for destroying your speakers. Um, while quicksand was a fun mitigation to deploy against bad actors, it could also be very visually jarring to anyone in the lobby. Imagine coming upon an enemy that was moving at a snail's pace in the middle of your rotation out of the hot zone. It could really trip you up. So it was catching legitimate players off guard. They would probably get stuck, and like at first they'd probably record them like, oh, this is a glitch, and then they realized, oh, it's a hacker. You know, let's run away from it. Meanwhile, Ricochet provided an update on its efforts to clamp down on the use of XIM-style controller pass-through devices that cheaters use. So, XIM devices. They are basically cheat devices. Uh, I want to get this right. I believe, if I remember right, they're like cheat devices that sit and fake themselves as something else. So um, I just saw an example of one the other day that I believe is like a name brand. Like I think it's from Alienware. I'm not even going to lie. You plug your mouse into it, and then it plugs into your controller, and then it's like, quote-unquote, legit aimbot. Basically, it adds, uh, it spoofs your mouse as a controller so it can unlock aim assist. But I'm sure there's many other things, and I would love to go over this as well. Oh yeah, unsupported device. So it's hardware cheats and stuff like that. That's, within the first two weeks of launching its detection, we saw a 59% drop in any use of these devices across Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone. Of those users, 57% of them did not utilize the device again. So that's a really cool 
thing to know. There have been cheaters and hackers kicked out of tournaments for using those style devices. So, all in all, realistically, this isn't going to stop them forever. Cheats will evolve. They will detect the clone players. And this is only going to stop them for maybe a month. The people that are really good at making these hacks, like, as far as I can tell, this is probably a paid hack uh, from this guy. I don't want to advertise them, but <laughs> this is probably a paid-for hack, which means as soon as an update drops, they're going to update their mod, or their hack, I mean, and try to figure out how to detect these fake clones. So it won't last very long that the game will be cheater-free because of this. Free hacks are going to be more dangerous to use for the next probably two, three months before something leaks about how to detect the fake players. But that's really about it for what I can think of. I remember with Combat Arms, it would take probably three or four months before stuff from VIPs would leak to a public mod or a pub, uh, public hack. So don't expect this to work very well. But anyway, let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. This was a fun video to make. I might do more stuff like this because this is on a subject that I know a lot about. There's also a lot of inspiration, I'm not even going to lie, from, uh, uh, who was that, Modern Vintage, uh, uh, Mudahar, I can't remember his YouTube channel name, uh, <laughs> but Mudahar, because I like his style of videos, maybe I kind of want to start doing those again. I used to do these style of videos years and years ago when I even lived at my parents' house, I actually was on camera doing them. Who knows, maybe this will evolve into something more. But I'll talk to you guys later. These are very fun videos for me to make. Um, I'm trying to get back into the stride of it. Talk to you guys later. Peace out.